And then we're also going to follow with this the timeline. So in the back, in the appendix of the trainer's reference guide, we have what's called the timeline. Okay. So in farming guides, we have management. Management is the way we care for our farm, the way we carry out our activities. What are the three management keys? Do everything to a high, standard. high standard. And on time with minimal wastage, as Griffin told us. High standards, on time, minimal wastage. What's the goal? Sustainable profitability. Okay? All right, so we need, let's talk about being on time. Where do we get this idea of being on time? The answer is easy, isn't it? Farming? Canada's way. God's way. Right? Who is on time? God. God. Who made time? God. In the beginning. God. <coughs> created the heavens and the earth. So we have time and matter all coming into existence. Because God is outside of time, right? That's, that's a hard concept to understand. But God created time, right? He made the beginning. But before the beginning was God. That's hard to, we always think the beginning is where everything starts, right? We, st we tell a story to our children. Okay, in the beginning, long time ago, we give it a, a beginning, a starting point. But God is before time. that starting point, okay? From eternity past, and then there's eternity future. So God made time. He created it. Right? What did he do to create it? At the beginning of creation, he made darkness, sorry, light, light. and darkness. Day and night. night. He created the sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night. He put stars in the heavens. We can start to tell days, months, years, seasons. Okay? These are all ordained by God. I could plan, even I can plan right now, when I will make a Farming God's Way training when I return to Kenya next year. Should I put it in April? No, I'll find all of you, hopefully, very busy. So I wanted to find a time when you're not busy. So I knew you shouldn't be so busy in the dry season. How did I know when the dry season would be? I would just guess. No, you have your seasons here. We know, close to the solstice, that is December 21st, the sun is lower, it doesn't heat the surface of the earth very much, and so we don't get much moisture rising and becoming rainfall. As we move towards March, the sun comes overhead, gets stronger, and the moisture rises, makes clouds and comes down, normally. We're in a bit of a dry spell now. But we can tell these things. Why? God put them into existence. They're there. Okay? We know also in God's plan of salvation of the Israelites, everything had time. God made time. And He kept time and He made a plan and each stage of the plan unfolded exactly as He designed. And it's still going to be so. There will be the end times. You and me can debate. When, were the, when are they? Have they started? Are they going to come? Okay. We might have different opinions, but still God is still in charge and He's going to make everything happen as He plans in His own time. Okay? So God keeps time. Should we not be the same? We should. What happens when you do, do not keep time in regards to any activity? Think of anything. Think, let's think of school. You come late. 
<laughs> I don't know, are the modern schools like the old ones? Are they still allowed to give a good cane? <laughs> yeah, we get, we get naughty children in our countries now because we, we put away the cane. I'm not talking about abusing children, I'm just talking about simple discipline. Okay, so, first of all, you might get punishment. Second of all, what happens? You miss something, you miss a lesson. So then you have to catch up some other time. So now your free time in the evening was supposed to be spent maybe playing a game or enjoying some football with your friends, but now you have to copy the notes from your friend that you brought home. And that can continue to get worse, okay? So anytime we, mi we are late, we miss. We call that opportunity cost, right? You, you, you don't know what you missed, but you missed something and there's a cost to missing it. You missed that opportunity, you missed something. Okay, tell me some activities that need to be on time in farming. Should we do land preparation on time? Sure. Mulching, should we mulch on time? Sure, or we should just wait till the middle of the season when there's lots of green things, and then we can cut them and mulch. No, there's a right time, okay? Planting. Planting on time? So, weeding. weeding on time? Is there going to be a wrong answer? No. no, because every single activity needs to be carried out on time. If you don't, there's a cost. Something happens. Expenses grow, yield declines. Profit margin decreases, we're in trouble. Okay? If you fail to weed your weeds on time, you pay. You pay dearly. The farmer always pays for weed growth. He will always pay for it. His only choice is, will it be much or little? If you leave your weeds and you say, ah, I don't have money for to pay laborers, I'll just leave them. Okay, you saved some shillings. Now, but what is the cost? Low yields. Low yields, that's right. So many times we say, oh, I don't have money, I don't have time. Okay, but your yield potential keeps declining as you leave any situation, especially weeds, okay? So all weed growth will come at your cost. So in order to minimize cost, do your weeding quickly and when the weeds are young. That's just one example, okay? So every activity needs to be done on time. Who has a simple exercise book, maybe one that you would use in primary school, any simple book that you use to record your farm's activities? You, I, I want to see hands. <laughs> An exercise book, any ledger, any spare piece of paper, a calendar, I don't know. Anywhere that you record your farm's activities. Yes, we Yeah, I want to see hands. Okay, we're six or seven. You're better than Rwanda. Rwanda was zero. But I did have more of a rural class. Here, I'm, I think I've got a little more urban class here. So I would expect slightly higher. But six, uh, six out of 70 some, what's the percent? It's less than 10%. Does that put us in a good situation? No. So what you fail to measure, you will fail to manage. What you fail to measure, you will fail to manage. If you don't know what you have, you don't know when you did it, how will you even assess next season a problem that occurred this season? You don't know which seed you planted, you don't know when you planted it, you don't know what input, you don't know how much. You forget how much you paid the laborers. It's, it's already a loss from the beginning. It's a situation very difficult to rectify because you have no records. Okay, so I advise, go by yourself a simple book, exercise book, I don't care, any cheap thing, even a blank piece of paper, you can just simply organize it with some columns, get your child's ruler, and have date, activity, 
details, and cost. January 15, rolling out, <coughs> details, 500 holes, cost, I paid one guy to dig them, and I paid him five, one shilling per hole, and he made 500 shilling, shillings. I mean, I don't know if the number's right, but you get the point, right? So now, Maybe when I plant it, let's say it's March 15, planting, today I planted 3,000 holes and I used, I'm just going to make up, a, we'll call it Nairobi 7 maize, whatever you will, you know, that I can write maybe, uh, I bought it this season. 2000 whatever okay maybe I paid someone here another I paid a group to plant for that many shillings the point is not the number the details the point is I have them then next season I I'm going to charge as people to work again I already know that what I paid them last year so I can say well the holes are easier this year Last year was the first time. This year they're going to be easy. Come, I show you. Okay, yeah. Let's negotiate. Okay, this year I can pay you 400. Anything, anyways, any decision is now. As, um, you can assess the decision. You can see what the problem could have been. You can account here at the end. We can add all of our money at the bottom. So much we can do with. Of course, this could be more detailed, but I think this is basically. The bare bones information which a farm should have. Okay? I could include the field number, field A. Okay? All that. But I just that's a little bit of an aside topic, but I feel it's it's quite needed. Okay? It has to do with these operations. So when we come to being on time, we actually have a timeline. So we have the order of activities. We've told you the step-by-step. -step. I did from land clearing all the way to waiting for the rains. Anthony took us from waiting for the rains all the way to harvest and post-harvest, okay? Now those, they're not only in an order, there's actually a time during the season in which we do those activities in around Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, some other parts in Central Africa and East Africa, okay? So, starting, this is a farm that has some decent size, okay? One, two, three acres, maybe more. Of course, if it's smaller, all of these tasks would take you less time. January 1st, I'm going to start holding out for six weeks. That's a month and a half, okay? There's roughly 9,000 holes to an acre, okay? Let's say I have two acres, that's 18,000, right? Right? Okay, let's divide. I want to work five days a week. I've got other things I want to do on Saturday. I'm going to rest on Sunday. Okay, so that's six weeks of five days. How many? 30 days. Right? I want 30 to go in there. Okay, what's, eight, what's 18,000 divided by 30? 600. So I know, as a matter of fact, that I would normally expect a grown, strong person to dig 500 holes a day, just on their own, okay? It gets, that's, that's a day's work. If you can do more than that, it might be harder depending on your soil. So that's one person, fairly good day of work, five days a week for those six weeks, okay? Most farms have more than one person, they have a family. Okay, and you share the activity. Maybe the kids could be moving the rope, dig a few stations, but dad is in the middle, mom and dad are in the middle doing the bulk of the work, the kids help moving it, different things. Okay, now we've got all the planting stations done, the furrows. Now we're going to put in our ash or lime, 
and our basal dressing, the one that goes in the station or in the furrow. Okay, that is now two weeks from this six weeks, take us to the middle of February to end of February, two weeks for putting in input. Farming God's Way is very easy to organize labor, whether it be children at home <coughs> or workers. You tell them, I want these holes with ash. Here's how you do it, put it in. Then you say, don't cover anything, don't do anything, only put the ash at the end of the day I'm coming by, or at midday, and you can easily tell whether ash was put. And you can also tell whether someone was throwing the ash like this, because that will just show a cloud on the soil, or whether they were placing the ash. Very easy to tell. Remember the old way is, do the activity, kick soil. So who knows what happened? No one. It's your best guess. We don't want guessing, we want assurance at work. So we have quality assurance now. My kids would work with me. <clears throat> Just when they're small and they put, I say, okay, each hole gets one cup of manure and they put one cup of ash, they put it. It's easy job for kids. Just have the wheelbarrow, you can be moving it through the garden with them and they do it. Workers can be trained the same. Of course, your presence is the best thing to be there with, with people doing these activities. Okay, so now we've got our input in, our ash or our lime, our input, a basal dressing covered with soil. We are ready <coughs> February 1st for the rains. Maybe the winds won't come on, sorry, not February 1st, March 1st, sorry. We're ready on March 1st for the rains. That would be if they came a bit early, but we're ready in case they do come early. We might plant any time in those three weeks. Maybe Kenya has a few different regions, but is that roughly, we're roughly in the zone there, right? Okay. So basically our two months of dry season is taken up with those holding out and putting the inputs. It's not heavy work. It's usually work that you should wake up early in the morning during the cooler part of the day, you dig, you do your things. And it's not, yes, it's hard, but you don't, we don't sleep in till 11 and go out in the heat of the sun, right? We're, we're intelligent. Okay, now what's next? So we plant here, all right? I'm not explaining the activities because we did talk about them in the step-by-step, -step. but now we're just fitting them into a plan here, okay? So then we do our first weeding right away after seven days. Thinning and top dressing. So thinning happens first because you don't want to top dress a plant that you're going to thin, right? First you thin down to an average of two over three planting stations. So that's six over three stations. And then we top dress if that's what we're going to do, okay? So that takes a couple weeks. Then we keep on this cycle. Every 10 to 14 days, we're passing through our fields, weeding, making sure that the weeds stay small or they don't get away on us. It's now at full canopy. This is maize. It's now joining the leaves, okay? Weeding will now become less. These first, probably only, usually, maybe only two weedings there, unless your land was very weedy to start with. Usually only two weedings, and then once the canopy is closed, likely maybe only one or two more weedings after that. Likely only one at the end, okay? Second, top dressing, just before when, it's called funneling, it, the, the flower is inside, and if you peeled it open, you would see the flower. But it's not yet like open and shown, okay? Because you want, the second top dressing to build the plant during cob formation. Not after cob formation, but during cob formation. So the cob obviously forms the same time as tasseling. So you, it's funneling, you, you, you can see it's kind of a round shape on the top of the plant. If you peel it open, you see the flower is starting to form inside. Okay? Then, uh, this is now a good time to think about compost making. Why? 
at this time. Because one of the hardest things to find, especially in a country now like Kenya, where we're having prolonged dry periods, is to find the green component. Uh, compost piles are 45% green component, and we need, uh, is it six or eight cubic meters? I think it's eight cubic meters, which is quite a lot of green material to make a heap which um, can be used over one acre. So we make quite a big heap of compost. So we need lots of green material. So we plan for that to make it in the middle of the rainy season when water should be more available and green material should be more available, okay? The dry and woody components and the manure can be collected over time. Okay, maybe a last weeding. As the plant nears maturity, we harvest. Um, and then we get into the short rains of the next season. Uh, Anthony mentioned topping. Topping is very important when we are chasing crops here, especially between the first and second season, because there's not a lot of time. So we want to get the maize out of the field. And one way to get it out of the field quicker is to top. That plant dries quicker, and we're able to get the maize out of the field and get another crop into the field before the rains start in late August, early September. Okay, this is in the trainer's reference guide, this is at the back. Um, it's a good thing even if you downloaded it and then took a screenshot in your phone, it'd be a good thing, you know, you could print or just have available for your planning, okay? So this is, again, it's maize. But still, a lot of this would still suit for beans. There's no top dressing, but still for beans. You're still going to dig your furrows early. You're going to put your input early, and you'll be ready for the beginning of March. Okay? Any? So that's just being on time. That's being on time and following. The, uh, sorry, following the production timeline, okay? So we've discussed already that everything needs to be on time. When we're not on time, it's going to cost us. So here's our plan. It's not just some good idea to be on time. We've actually got a schedule to follow, okay? It's just like beginning, being given, you know, starting your first uh, semester at university. They give you your timetable, so you know where the classes are, when they are, and you you can plan on attending. So everything's laid out. There's no guesswork. What do we have to do? When do we have to do it? How do we do it? All of that is already given to us, okay? So that we can be on time and realize the benefit of good management. Any questions about this topic of being on time? Good. It's not really difficult, it's just having that discipline to, to keep on time. Okay, it takes, it takes commitment and it takes saying no to many things so that we can say yes to farming. All right, uh, are we fighting sleep here? How are we doing? <laughs>